Decentralized storage and blockchain might guarantee data preservation and confidentiality while reporting war crimes. Welcome to CryptoLink channel. If you love getting news and updates about cryptocurrency, join our community by subscribing to our channel. You can tap the bell icon to never miss our new videos. If you enjoy our channel, kindly like and share it with your friends. October 1, 2022. Cointelegraph tweeted. While war crimes are unfortunately still part of the world today, blockchain could be able to help verify and report them. Reporting via at RachelWolf00. The United Nations appointed human rights inspectors have verified that Russian soldiers in Ukraine have committed war crimes. In March 2022, the Independent International Commission of Inquiry on Ukraine was established to give United Nations human rights inspectors a framework for reporting war crimes in the area. According to an article published by the UN, Eric Mose, the head of the Independent International Commission of Inquiry on Ukraine, over 150 witnesses and victims were questioned throughout the investigation's 27 visits to cities and communities. The remains of weaponry as well as cemeteries, detention facilities, and torture spots were examined. Even if the Commission's findings made it possible for UN investigators to compile evidence of war crimes committed in Ukraine, people still need the right tools and reporting procedures in order to correctly and safely report these crimes. Furthermore, as the war in Ukraine approaches its seventh month, it is more important than ever to protect the evidence of war crimes. Experts in the field think that blockchain technology may be able to address many of the problems that people and organizations who record war crimes experience in light of these difficulties. For instance, NYM's Chief Strategy Officer Jaya Clara Brack, whose technology uses the Cosmos blockchain to safeguard the privacy of numerous apps, said to Cointelegraph that NYM is creating a program called Anondrop that will let users submit files safely and secretly. The goal of a non-drop is to democratize the process of obtaining information that may be utilized to prosecute human rights lawsuits. This would be essential for the objective of anonymously communicating and securely recording war crime evidence in the present political atmosphere in Ukraine. She clarified that, a mixnet, which is at the core of NYM, is a system that gathers data from regular users then mixes it with other data using encryption to create an identical appearance. Along with metadata monitoring and IP tracking, it safeguards against individuals viewing the network. NYM offers an anonymity layer that enables users to transfer data without identifying themselves, and data is subsequently kept on the decentralized storage network Filecoin. Some of the most crucial data about mankind is kept on Filecoin to guarantee that it is always accessible to the public, according to Will Scott, a software engineer at Protocol Labs, which is firm that is collaborating with Filecoin over its decentralized storage system. Given that it enables people in places like Ukraine to report, transmit, and save data anonymously, a blockchain network and decentralized storage might be a major tool for recording war crimes. According to a Wall Street Journal report from May 2022, prosecutors claim that it is hard to examine all of the evidence for each alleged war crime since Russian forces have taken over so much of the nation. The need for eyewitnesses of violations of human rights to come out without fear of getting retaliation is also becoming more and more important, according to General Counsel of NYM and Boston University's Associate Professor of Law. He stated, anonymity network level is the only method to ensure the safety and security required to submit evidence to prosecute criminals in Ukraine, wherein eyewitnesses of war crimes are up against a technically sophisticated opponent. A work in progress. A non-drop has a lot of potential, but as Clara Breck pointed out, it's still in the early phases of development. This year, in an effort to discover people who could assist us in expanding the capabilities of Anondrop, we participated in the Kiev Tech Summit Hackathon. As an illustration, user interface of Anondrop is still being developed, and we need to figure out how to authenticate uploaded photographs. According to Gapper, verification is the next essential step in ensuring that documents submitted to the NYM network may be utilized as evidence in court. The capacity of the region to contest the veracity of any proof, in my opinion, is one of Russia's biggest advantages in this conflict. Another advantage is Russia's use of deepfakes and false information. 
we must protect ourselves from these attacks. Gapper stated that in order to address this, image providence characteristics inside a non-drop must be introduced in order to provide simple verification when documentation are reviewed in a legal court. Although SecureDrop, a service that enables anyone to upload photographs confidentially for media outlets to utilize, currently offers similar protocols for image verification, Gapper thinks that they are only applicable to siloed enterprises. By democratizing the procedure, we hope to advance photo verification so that users, not only media organizations, may utilize it. Verifying war crimes may become simpler for court officials once photo providence is put into use. An expert in human rights law named Brittany Kaiser informed Cointelegraph that she thinks that such a technology might enhance the field of human rights documentation, in which many people feel too unsafe to report their own findings. It is feasible to confirm common signs of atrocity crimes, such as handbinding, mass graves, executions, signs of torture, and other transgressions of international human rights law which qualify as war crimes as well as other atrocity classifications, using photographs alone. It shouldn't be surprising that a non-drop isn't the sole blockchain application devoted to the preservation and authentication of war crimes given the possibilities for this use case. Blockchain technology is also being employed to record war crimes by Starling Labs, a Stanford-based research center that focuses on data integrity through cryptography and protocols of decentralized web. Even having image providence in place, confirming the accuracy of data continues to be the primary issue for NYM and Starling Labs. For instance, Scott emphasized that more effort must be done to ensure that photographs are genuine and that verification is effective. He said that different Ukrainian areas had blocked internet access. There are several distribution-related issues that are essential to take into account. Despite the difficulties, it's noteworthy that organizations charged with prosecuting war crimes are thinking about utilizing technology to speed up current procedures. For instance, the International Criminal Court or ICC in The Hague stated its strategy plan for 2016 to 2018 indicates that technology might enhance the identification, gathering, and evidence presentation. The report also mentioned the ICC's intention in forging collaborations with academic institutions and non-governmental entities to make it easier to document war crimes using modern technology. Gapper highlighted that NYM will keep working to make a non-drop usable in places like Ukraine in the meantime. We must move forward with this operation no matter what, as Russia has a history of conducting prolonged wars. That's it for our today's video. So, what can you say about the news? Let us know about it in the comments section down below. Thanks for tuning in to Cryptolink. We are always excited to provide you with news and updates about cryptocurrency and if you like this video, please click the like button. See you on the next one.